Ciao a tutti e benvenuti, io sono Nicola Peruzzi e questo è Panini Comics Insider, il nostro nuovo format di interviste ai grandissimi autori del mondo del fumetto a 360 gradi. Prima di dirvi chi sarà il nostro ospite di oggi, ricordatevi di iscrivervi al nostro canale YouTube e soprattutto di cliccare sulla campanella per restare aggiornati su tutti i nostri prossimi contenuti video ed interviste. Non dimenticatevi peraltro di continuare a seguire o di seguire per la prima volta se non l'avete ancora fatto tutti i nostri canali social Facebook, Instagram di Panini Comics. Trovate tutti i link in descrizione. Ma veniamo a noi. Vi presento Mr. Grant Morrison. Hello Grant, thank you for being here with us at Panini Comics Insider today and uh, thank you thank you very much for being our first guest of honor. Uh, and uh, I wanted to start this chat uh, with uh, something that uh, I read on the internet uh, a couple of days ago which struck me uh, and uh, made me think about you and your work. Uh, I read this news, uh, I don't know how much, uh, I didn't have time, I didn't have the real interest to verify the news, but it was fun because it said that um, 2020 was the fastest year ever for a certain, you know, like uh, uh, yeah. contingencies and stuff. Uh, it seemed like uh, it moved faster uh, than the previous year. Are we really reaching the super context? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it would be nice to think so. Uh, there always does seem the, the, the sense that time is, is somehow speeding up. I don't know if that's just because the older we get and the, the bigger we get, time seems to move faster. You know, time, we know that time moves slower for smaller animals and for children. So maybe it's just a thing that applies to people when they grow up. They start to seem as if time is moving faster. But yeah, there's also the potential that time time is unusual. We don't quite know how it works. And it may well be that it's genuinely accelerating that there is, you know, like water goes down a plug hole, goes down a sink, that we are being drawn towards something at the centre of time, you know, as they say, a singularity or the, the doorway to the super context, as I called it, there's a, there's a kind of a potential breakdown of the structure of time as we've understood it. And, you know, it, it would be interesting to see, but I think it'd be pretty scary as well, and it would be more like this. I mean, I, I've felt the same thing this year. I, I kind of haven't been out of the house pretty much since last March. You know, I haven't been in a yeah. store. I've, 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 been in, I've been in a car. I've, I've travelled about, but I haven't been out about. And it feels like the last time I had a birthday feels like two days ago. It feels like, you know, maybe a few days ago. And I did a podcast back then. I talked to, to, to you, Antonio, you know. It's, uh, yes. It feels like, feels like weeks ago. So there is definitely a sensation, but again, it's uh, there's been very little happening. I think when things happen, time seems to take stretch out a bit. You know, if things are going on, at least you understand that. Well, that was last year, that was last month, that was last week. This has just been everything's been the same. So it's hard to say. It would be funny if it was the super context. It'd be funny <laughs> if we were sinking into this uh, this spiral that leads us to some kind of ultimate version of time. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm just waiting to see, like everyone else. I, I, I thought about you as well uh, because of, uh, you know, like the, the, what you said about the time kind of shrinking. Uh, it feels like back to the days where I first read The Invisibles for many reasons. We have already discussed this mm -hmm. uh, previously. But uh, um, what is uh, very interesting about uh, The Invisible was that uh, Invisible invented something which was not pop at the time and made it pop. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, and it feels all part of the, of the same process. Uh, how did you, did you feel when you were writing about stuff which was uh, kind of weird, you know, kind of fringe mostly, mm -hmm. and to see that now everything is uh, very popular and very mainstream pretty much? I think that kind of happens, you know, the, 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 the things that are on the, the fringe are on the outside of the mainstream tend to become uh, drawn towards the centre as well, you know, it, it tends to be that, that, as I say, things that were underground become overground or become co-opted generally by pop musicians or by people who have a wider reach, so that's why you'll find things like, you know, the, the beatniks of the 40s were a pretty small movement, but then it got picked up by 
rock and roll music and by the Beatles and suddenly the notion of the beatnik became something very specific yeah. in pop culture. So I, I think with the Invisibles, I, it was just stuff that I was getting into at the time and with the Invisibles trying to make a, a myth for the 20th century, the late 20th century and the start of the 21st century. And to me, it seemed that what was mythical in our world were these insane conspiracy stories. This notion that there was some force that was behind everything that was happening to us, that it could be identified, that it could be located and understood. And that seemed to me very much a, a religious impulse. It was the notion that we can't explain the chaos around us by a single mm. source. It seemed religious. So to me, it was to the, the type of religion that I tried to create in The Invisibles was based around conspiracy theories, was based around, as I say, the idea that there is a single one way of explaining the world and it can all be reduced to one group of people in a room around a table, which is preposterous, but it so, works as a myth. And, and, you know, I kind of feel slightly responsible in the sense that I'm watching TV and seeing what's happening in America and the whole QAnon thing. And yeah. QAnon is taking what was the myth in The Invisibles and turning it into reality for people. Yeah. And I find that very strange. And I'm glad that my name hasn't been quite attached to it, you know, but I watch <laughs> QAnon and I, I look at the type of conspiracies that they are promoting. And it's very much in the, the mold of the invisibles, you know, that all rich people are monstrous, Satan worshipping paedophiles, and that there is some kind of gigantic alien or extraterrestrial conspiracy that lies behind it all. And that we're all being herded towards some kind of death camp future. And it's very much from the invisibles, but it's become a reality for a lot of people's lives. And, and that to me was kind of strange to see the genie escape from the bottle in that way and to become something real. And it was almost it's the opposite of the, the, the masks and V for Vendetta. This is a version of that, which is a kind of nightmare of, of you know, of control and fear. So, yeah, I mean, I think The Invisibles has is, is gone mainstream, but in a very odd and unusual way. And a lot of the ideas were picked up not by the left, which was originally where it came from, a kind of leftist sensibility. But those ideas have been picked up and, 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 and developed by the right, which is, is, is odd. And it's kind of, you know, that's that's what you don't expect when you're creating these kind of works, that the, the, the interpretation can change everything about it. You know, it depends how people read it, it depends how they, they choose to act on it. And it can completely, can completely veer away from the original intent. Do you think that is, uh, this is related to the fact that a lot of people didn't really understand how much humor uh, you put into your comics? You know, like that there is always part of your stuff which says i'm not taking myself too seriously mm -hmm. but somehow it gets lost for some people what do you think well very, very much and i think you know I, I can't blame people for not having the same dark or surreal sense of humor as me but <laughs> certainly all, all of it for me i mean kind of everything i do there is that element of there's a slight parody there's a slight remove for me that that i'm also I'm not just telling a story. I'm trying to talk about, say, the character. You know, something like Wonder Woman, where it's, I'm, not, I'm not just telling a Wonder Woman story. I'm also talking about William Marston and his ideas and how they relate to me and to the world around me. So there's almost a kind of element of, of that, of, of, of kind of looking at it askance, of kind of looking at it with a, a, a slight wry grin and thinking, do these ideas really work? And, and how can we play with them? And how can we make them funny? And even in, in things like in The Invisibles, you'll see <clears throat> what I think people rarely notice in The Invisibles, that the, the, the evil characters tend to be absurd as well, you know. And when I put in the, the serial killers like Orlando, I remember back in the 90s, there was a big vogue in comics for serial killer characters. And it just got more and more extreme and ridiculous the way they would operate. You know, they, they, they couldn't just kill you, they'd have to skin you and then wear your face as a mask or whatever. So in The Invisibles, I had this character and his, the, the, the murders, the serial killing gets more and more ridiculous. There's one sequence where he says, yeah, I cut off her lips and stapled them to the dog. And to me, oh, this, yeah. was the, this was just me kind of making fun of what was going on in comics like Preacher or, or some of them the more violent or more, you know, uh, those, those kind of comics that dealt with, with that kind of material, I felt. It was me kind of parodying that and taking it to this level of extremity where it becomes ridiculous. But at the same time, as you say, I think a lot of people miss the ridiculousness of it. 
And I think they also missed it, the fact that, you know, in The Invisibles, we basically, we undermine that whole idea of the, the, the duality and the struggle between two binaries and the notion that there are these vast forces that are opposing each other, freedom and, and, and control or, you know, slavery and free, whatever it was. And we kind of undermine that, say there is no binary, it's all one thing, it's all one system that kind of feeds on itself and, and the push and the pull is part of how it moves forward and how it understands itself. But as I say, a lot of people just didn't get to that point either and, and what appeals to them is this notion of conspiracy, the conspiracy that explains existence. It's almost, it takes the place of God or religion because it allows you to explain why things are the way they are and why you're so small in the middle of it. So yeah, they missed the, they missed the humor and they missed the philosophy. So they kind of missed out on most of it. <laughs> yeah, also the sense of positive thinking that there was behind it. I mean, the, the Invisibles was a, a positive story, very positive story, and uh, it seems like it's deprived uh, of that positivism. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but the the, the positivism obviously came out of a, a time for which, for me, seemed quite positive. You know, and then. In the 90s, I was doing a lot of world travel. It was easy to go around the world. The, the, the Berlin Wall had come down. There was a sense of, of, of freedom to a certain extent. And it was, it was illusory, you know, it wasn't real ultimately. But the sense was there and it was powerful enough for me at least to, to feel that. And as I explored magic and as I was traveling the world and doing all the things that went into the Invisibles comic, I honestly came to believe that ultimately everything is okay, that the universe is okay, that it runs, it has a, it has a tendency towards organization ultimately. And I presume that at the, the furthest reaches of that tendency towards organization, there is some kind of higher consciousness and I know because we can reach it. And I know I've, I've contacted what seems to be limitless consciousness that expands forever and is eternally cre creative. There is something like that out there. The fact that we can experience it proves that we are not trapped in some fallen world where there's no contact with God or the Godhead or the sense of the eternal. So I had to admit that for all the for all the horrors that there are in the world, for all the terrible things that happen, there is a sense of, of uh, development towards something more cohesive and, as I say, more organized. So I could only feel optimism after that once i'd gone through all these initiations once i'd seen this stuff once i'd confronted demons and or angels and or gods or things that at least seemed like those things then i realized that the the, the thing was running very well and it's easy to say that when you're, you're doing okay it's harder to say that if you're dying in a hospital bed but at the same time on the larger scale of everything it's all going very well apart from this year <laughs> <laughs> But even this year, you know, you look at this year and that the planet's been allowed to to recover a tiny little bit. You know, they, they, they're calling it the anthropos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Human, human activity is diminished to the point where the animals are back in the streets and the air is cleaner. And there has, there's this moment where we've kind of learned that maybe we could live in a different manner and it would work. So I kind of think even even this, there, there's just there's way too many people. There are 8 billion people. And I think to have a moment of pause and a moment to think maybe maybe there's another way of living might have done us good in the in the long run. Se questo video è piaciuto anche a voi, vi ricordo di iscrivervi al nostro canale YouTube e di cliccare soprattutto sulla campanella in modo tale da rimanere costantemente aggiornati sui nostri prossimi video e le nostre prossime interviste. Vi ricordo anche di continuare a seguire i canali social di Panini, quindi Facebook e Instagram. Trovate tutti i link in descrizione. Io vi ringrazio tanto, vi do appuntamento al prossimo video di Panini Comics Insider. Ciao!